How do Facebook? So we should be live on Facebook. Uh, we've been playing with the audio settings a little bit, so hopefully you can hear us. Um, you might be able to hear me too. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Sorry, we're just playing with the settings at the moment. And there we are. We're, hooray, we can see each other. <laughs> do you want to just nudge that? Towards you a little bit, Jay. <laughs> Sorry, I was waiting for that to actually move live and it didn't. Anyway, yes, yeah, so we'll wait 30 seconds for that to catch up. So anyway, guys, this is episode three. It's all about compounding. So is that what I wanted to do? Yeah, that works. Oh, that's good. That's a nice little setup. Um, so yeah, we've, we've played with the audio settings a little bit this time. So we've got, we should hopefully have lost the buzzing that was on the Facebook audio. Um, the podcast one is, is pretty much fine, so that was okay. Um, though we are on a different setting and a slightly different setup. Uh, thank you, Lee, for your... Uh, critiquing <laughs> <laughs> lovely thank you including diagrams you sent over a diagram of how we should sit and how we should set up so we've got a little bit of a different setup am I sitting okay is so that, we need is to good? are we talking into the microphone sort of correctly we've got this little <laughs> triangle thing going on here now um, you're spot behind us it's uh, it's not my fifth birthday it's actually my son Harry's fifth, fifth birthday yesterday mm-hmm. so that's why we've got banners here anyway so we're cracking on with today's uh, today's episode which is all about compounding um, so I'm going to hand over to Jason, who's going to do the entire episode, because it's Jason's favourite subject. I think it's your favourite subject, oh, actually. Mine. I think you like compounding. I'm not sure I'm going to get many words in at all. I mean, it's, it doesn't happen very often, but um, yeah, I think you're going to enjoy your compounding session quite happily. There we are. Um, so but before we do that, obviously you guys are seeing us in the Facebook group, uh, but for the um, benefit of everybody else. Who isn't listening yet, because we haven't done live on the audio. Who isn't listening yet, I'll talk in a minute then, so that's me done. <laughs> Cheers, John. But yeah, but for for the benefit of the people in the Facebook group, as always, please Mm -hmm. do comment on this thread if you've got anything you want to know about the compounding. If we spot it live, we'll try and answer it live. If not, we will pick it up. There'll be no thread, uh, no post, no comment will be left unanswered. Um, By the way, if it does look like we're looking not quite at you, it's because we have got our our kind of laptop screen just underneath the camera. So we're not boss-eyed. And and just while we're talking um, Facebook, guys, Feel free to invite any of your business friends that you think might benefit from listening to our ramblings each week. Um, do add them in there. They may have the questions of themselves, so be sure to, to do add them. Um, they'd be more than welcome. Fantastic. And with that, without further ado, shall we go live? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Send, don't need to sound too convinced. Okay. I'm live. So, uh, welcome everybody to episode three of the Big Idea Podcast. And today we are talking all about compounding. So, my favourite subject in the world. Um, and we, we kind of touched on this at the end of last, last week's episode. And you said to me, you know, what is compounding? I did. You did. So, Jason's then going to sing a song to you along the lines of, do you want to build a snowman? Let it go. <laughs> Let it grow. Let it grow. Let is that the one? <laughs> Very similar. So, the reason I bring up snowman is because my business hero, my hero full stop, is a man called Warren Buffett. And I think Warren Buffett is currently the third or fourth richest man on the planet. Um, And he's made that money himself. So I think when I was doing some research for this, I think his latest estimated wealth was somewhere in the region of $67 billion, uh, which he's amassed literally in his lifetime. You know, he started at age 11, and just has grown his money over that period. So Warren Buffett's got a, well, it's, it's not actually his book, but there's a book about him. So it's a biography of Warren Buffett, which is, a, it's called The Snowball. And in this book, Warren Buffett tells, he uses a metaphor of a snowball. And he says, you know, compounding is like, it's, it's you imagine it's snowing and these wonderful flakes are coming down. You just hand, hold out your hand and you get a snowflake in your hand. And then you hold your hand there for a you know, few minutes longer and then you get a collection of, of snowflakes there and you just literally package them up into a little, like, neat little ball. He said, and you just keep, keep on, you know, as the snowflakes coming down, you just keep packing them on, keep packing them on. And then eventually you'll have this tiny little ball. He said, then imagine you're stood at the top of a massive, massive hill. And all you need to do with this snowball is get this little ball and lay it down on the floor at the top of this hill and gently start it rolling. He said, and the hill will do all the work. 
So basically, the snow is your money, your investments, your time, and the hill is time itself. It is a timeline. So compounding is layer upon layer of returns. So most people know it as kind of interest on your interest. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you've got money in the bank and it's earning you 5%, then you've got 100 quid and then you're going to earn 5 quid. That's great. But if you don't spend that 5 quid, then the next year you haven't got 100 quid in the bank, you've got 105 quid in the bank. And then you earn 5% of that. This is the first time I've got the calculator out on the podcast. <laughs> So you've got 105 He's rehearsed quid. this, he knows the answers really. So all of a sudden that, mm -hmm. that becomes £110.25. So you've earned 25 pence more than you did the previous year. Mm -hmm. You do that the next year, and I've put that the wrong way around. <laughs> and you're up to 115 quid. You do that, say, 10, 10 years, so 7, 8, 9, 10. And all of a sudden you're up to £171. Now, normally at £5 a year for 10 years, you'd expect 50 quid return, but well, you've actually got 71 quid back. So it's, it's an, I love the metaphor of a snowball, just you know, a little amount, roll it down the hill, let the, the hill of time take the strain. And to be honest, that, uh, that resonates really well with me because I didn't really get it until you described it in that way. Wow, so, uh, so actually it's a really good description. And um, yeah, leaving it over that period of time down the hill, doing its own kind of thing where you've given it a little bit of energy in the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it is. I mean, if you, if you kind of think of it in terms of physics, then that is the, the time is the momentum that you're actually applying to the object. Mm -hmm. The object is your cash. And all you're doing is actually saying, well, actually, I'm going to use the momentum of that cash rolling down the hill to just accumulate more cash. And all you've got to do then is make sure you're not stood at the bottom of the hill and get wiped out by it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. By the way, Keith Crockford, if you're listening to this, mate, this is this is for you because he nearly got wiped out by a boulder when he was climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Did he? A few months back, he did. I didn't know about it that. It was a near-death experience for him. He did his best Indiana Jones impression, <laughs> <laughs> running away from this boulder. <laughs> I've got Wiley Coyote in my mind, but there we are. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, Warren Buffett doesn't think in terms. When, when he thinks of money, he doesn't think of money in today's terms. And another fantastic reference in the book, um, again, I will drop it in the, in the show notes, so if you want to buy the book, it will be in there. Fantastic book. It's not written by Warren Buffett, it's not an official biography, but it is written by those that are closest to him and know him, because there's, there's you know, literally hundreds and hundreds of books about Buffett. In my mind, this is the best one. Anyway, in there he talks about... Um, He's, he's, a, he's a funny man, he's very anal about money and you know, to the extent that he would come home from a day at the office and he would go up to his office in his house and spend say three hours reading annual reports of companies. And he did that one day, I think his son was like splayed out on the, on the stairs, he'd like fallen down the stairs and Warren Buffett just got home, stood over him or stepped over him, went up to his office, read his reports, uh, came out an hour later and said, oh, you okay down there? <laughs> really? <laughs> because he was literally that focused and that driven. But yeah, when when he met the first Mrs. Buffett and was persuaded that, well, we're going to settle down now, what we need to do is we need to actually buy a house. And he was mortified because this house was going to cost him, well, his wife said the house was going to cost him $57,000. Only Warren, to Warren Buffett, $57,000 was what it was worth now. So in his mind, $57,000 compounded for 20 years at 20%, which is he, what he was doing at the time, was literally he was growing his money by 20% every year. Mm -hmm. So he said, if I spend $57,000 on that house, that house had just cost me $2 million. Why the hell do I want to spend $2 million on a house? <laughs> so yeah, he wasn't seeing it as, you know, he, he wasn't seeing what he had as that little snowball. Mm -hmm. He was seeing what that little snowball was gonna be 20 years down the hill. And to him, that was just mad to think, why would I waste two million pounds on a house? No, you know, I mean, we went back to 1950 something, but from his point of view, you know, that house was never gonna be worth two million pounds. Whereas that $57,000 cash would 
because he knew what to do. He knew how to grow that from 57,000 to 2 million. So they live in a trailer park then, did they? They actually still live in the same house. Still live in the same yeah. house? Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, I say he's the fourth richest man on the planet, still lives in the same house. I think his car is 20 years old. Oh, right. Um, yeah, he, he just says, well, why would I buy a depreciating asset hmm? um, when I can appreciate my money? Yeah, but, you know, why spend 10 grand on a car that's going to be worth five grand in two years' time that is going to be scrapped in six years' time or, you know, it's worth $1,000 when I could take that $10,000 and turn it into twenty thousand dollars in seven years. <laughs> fair, fair point. <laughs> yeah, um, and that's kind of the way we're now working with within our own business. Is we're working to twenty year plans, so we're using that hill of time because you know if we can if we can take a hundred grand of our money and just roll it down the hill, then. Yeah, we can using nothing but compounding. We can turn it into a million pound plus mm -hmm. just by literally packing on as much snow as possible and rolling it down the hill. And I know that, I, that sounds really simple. It does sound really simple. John. <laughs> yeah, there'll be lots of people listening who are going to go, "Oh, that sounds really simple." Tell us how. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the the main thing is that you need to be able to beat the market. You need to be able to beat inflation. Um, and I don't want to get too involved, but what's the current rate of inflation? Uh, just under 2%. <laughs> just over 2%. Cool. Right. 4%. That's the official. 10%. Line. I, I, would, I, would, <laughs> I would say it's somewhere between 5 and 10%. Right. Um, based purely on, well, do you feel, you know, if, if you've had a pay rise every year, do you feel better off than you were five years ago, you know, if you've had a pay rise of more than 2%? Um, have prices gone up by more than that? Do, do Mars bars get bigger every year or do they seem to be shrinking? Um, I mean, we're, we're recording this. Toblerones. We're, yeah, Toblerones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They take the the away peaks. half the peaks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's, let's, make, let's yeah. flatten that mountain range. Um, Quality Street is a perfect one. Every year at Christmas time, there's this image that goes viral of Quality Street in the 80s was this massive tub mm. and now it's like a little teacup. But the price stays the same, I suppose. That's, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. So you're not actually paying any more for it. You're just getting. But you are because you're less. paying you're per less. gram yeah, yeah. less, uh, more. You're paying, you know, you're paying probably twenty percent more than you were three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. But it's been, you know, it's been um, hidden as well. A Mars bar still costs seventy p. Yeah, 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 it does. But it's thirty percent smaller than it was. So actually, a Mars bar now costs thirty percent more than it did. In real terms, anyway, that, that's I'm getting that too. A brief, a brief lesson <laughs> on numbers. inflation, but that's what you need to do. Is you need to find investments that beat inflation, that beat the market. It's no good compounding stuff at two percent, at three percent. And in fact, you know, many investments from the high street, you're lucky to find that. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, in our current account, we get 025 percent on our money. So even compounding that for a hundred years. What you're going to get ten percent mm -hmm. return? You know, we we're now working to investments that are not they're not for your average high street investor. You know, you need to be um, what's called a, um, a the word has eluded me then um, sophisticated. That's why you need to be a sophisticated. Oh, sophisticated. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, if you have to wear a monocle uh, and uh -huh. a cane. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you've ever seen uh, Trading Places, you know it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's one of my best films of all time. I love it. <laughs> it's yeah, it's kind of the, the, the pair from that. That's that there are sophisticated investors, but it's all about finding the investments that beat the market. And so for the average Joe, they can't do that. Or can they? You can't walk into your high street bank and say, "I want something that's going to pay me ten percent per year, please." What you can do though is start a business. And you can reinvest in yourself and your own learning, your own investments. There, you can you, know, you can invest in property. You can teach yourself how to trade the stock market. You can trade, teach yourself how to trade the forex market. Um, these are not without risk, but the risk is for the uneducated. If you educate yourself and actually, um, yeah, actually. You know, find out what's needed to get these returns. You know, make it aim to lose a little bit of money, then you can actually achieve that. I mean, some of the stuff we so we we were looking at now basic 
10% return. So that's what we're looking for as a bare minimum from our investments. So we've got stuff that earns a lot more, we've got st stuff that earns a little bit less, but on the whole, we're looking for a minimum of 10%. So if we can, I mean, we, we worked on that the, the other day, whereby we made a saving within our own business of about 100 to 150 quid a month. And I remember sitting there at the time thinking, why am I spending a day of my time just to save 100 quid? Because mm -hmm not worth the time and then all of a sudden I sat there with my favourite tool which again I will drop it into the show notes I'll put it in the Facebook group as well if you've never played with one of these you are in for a treat it's called a compound interest calculator and basically you can just put numbers in there and you can say right if I grew that at 5% per year for 25 years how much is that worth well what about if I grew it at 10% for 20 years oh well, what about if I grew it at 10% and added 200 quid a month and all of a sudden you get to see these nice big big numbers come out at the end of it you think okay cool that's all we need to do so i i literally i played with one of these calculators and i put in it right so let's say we we save between 100 150 quid a month so i think i might put an average of like 125 in mm -hmm. um what if we invest that money so instead of just chucking it back into the business and it sits in a working capital fund earning 0.25 percent what if we put that money to work earning 10 percent and we compound that for 10 years. Now, I was going to ask you how much you think that's going to be, but you just read the script. So, <laughs> where is it? <laughs> oh, yeah, tell I know, sorry, that was a bombshell. This is scripted. <laughs> it's a bombshell to me as well. <laughs> well, I think, what was it? 100 pounds a month? 100 to 150 a month for 20 years. 20 years. 10%. That's 1,200 pounds a month. 10 years is 12,000 pounds. Over ten years, yeah, that's not bad, is it? That's a, that's a good saving. That, that's how much you've actually that was, that was worth. You kind yeah. of saving a hundred pounds, yeah. Um, and then you think compounding on that. Times two, so it's twenty years. Oh, it's twenty years. Yeah. Okay, so that was more twenty four thousand. Yeah. Okay, and you're going to compound that somehow. Yeah, we're going to compound it at ten percent. At ten percent. Yeah. So that's not just adding ten percent on, is it? No, not at all. That would be easy, wouldn't it? That would. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go on, John. Cool. Drum so, roll. Well, maybe not with the it depends. Stuff, so I mean, it depends on, you know, obviously there's lots of variables there, how much you can actually save per month, whether you get the 10% every year, whether you do it for 20 years religiously, but you'd be looking at somewhere in the reach of 75 to 100,000 pounds. Wow. For 100 quid a month, 150 quid a month saving. Saving. Just if you can religiously do that, just put it aside and, you know, chuck that into something that earns you 10%, you could potentially have 100 grand in the bank and... To me, this is, for the majority of people who perhaps don't have their own business, but are thinking, well, actually, you know, perhaps they'd like to start their own business or they're, they're working for someone at the moment thinking, well, what am I going to do? I've got this pension crisis coming up. Well, if you can actually get a decent investment that you can earn 10% on, which is not out of the question, um, so you're not going to find it on the high street, you're going to have to put a little bit of work in, it's never going to be completely passive, mm. but... If you can get 10% per year and reinvest everything, and you say you could put aside £250 a month for 40 years, so i.e. your working life. I know probably if there's people read, uh, listening to this in 10, 15 years' time, the working life is probably going to be more like 60 years. But let's say you do it for 40 years. 250 quid a month for 40 years, compounded at 10%. How much do you reckon that's going to be? I wasn't very good at the last. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, let, let's again, let's look at the figures. So, two fifty a month, mm -hmm. twelve months, forty years. You're putting in one hundred and twenty thousand pounds. Okay. So, that's not a bad lump sum, mm -hmm. anyway, for most people, is it? So, actually, yeah. just putting the money aside is good. But if you compound that at ten percent per year, you actually end up not with one hundred twenty thousand, not with two hundred forty thousand, not even with half a million. You would have 1.4 million quid in the bank. Oh, that's us. Yeah, I know why you like compounding that. 250 quid a month. That is pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> I bet, mate. You know, so, you, you know, you could become, I mean, basically, you know, if you run the numbers down, you could probably, for t 200 quid a month, everyone could be a millionaire within their lifetime. Mm. Just at 10%. This is where it gets exciting with the compound interest calculator. It's like, actually, yeah, that's great, but that's at 10%. What if I worked on these investments and these assets a little bit more and I got an average of 15% 
every year for those 40 years. How much does that 1.4 million become then? Mm -hmm. Well, that then becomes 5.7 million. So yeah, just quadruple it again. So that's fantastic. So what about, the, well, if I can get 15%, what if I don't invest 250 quid a month? What if I can find an extra 50 pounds a month? What difference would that 50 quid, just the 50 quid make to that overall investment? Well, I, I, I'll tell you because I ran the numbers this morning. You've done very good with these numbers, <laughs> I've got to say. Yeah. So 250 quid a month at 15% for 40 years, 5.7 million. Mm -hmm. Amazing. An extra 50 quid a month from day one over those 40 years, 6.9 million. So that extra 50 quid a month turns into 1.2 million pounds extra because of the rolling down the hill, because of the compounding. That is all that's happened there is that 50 quid a month, you know, literally 50 times 12 times 40, you're putting in an extra 24 grand. Mm -hmm. But that 24 grand, thanks to compounding, turns into 1.2 million pounds extra. That's a decent rate of return. That is not a bad day rate of return. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> or that could earn you 600 pounds. Just at the high street. If you leave it in the high street bank account. So uh, 600 pounds, 1.2 million. I don't know which I'd rather have. But I mean, I encourage anybody who's listening to this, literally just, I will drop a link and say in the show notes, it will be in the Facebook group. Search Big Idea Podcast on Facebook if you're not already in the group. Um, we'll drop the compound interest calculator in there. Have a play with the figures. It is great fun. It really is. Um, and, and we use this on a, on a daily basis now. So I'm, I'm looking at an investment at the moment. Um, so it's a commercial property investment and in the in the prospectus basically to, to give you an outline of what they're paying they're paying a flat 10% per year on my cash invested plus 25% bonus after 10 years so the total return on investment is 125% after 10 years that's what the brochure says mm -hmm. so the brochure says you put £70,000 in and in 10 years time, you will have had 157,500 pounds. That's 125% return. And I think that's great. But what they haven't told you in the brochure is, well, you can compound that because every year they pay you your seven grand, 10% back. Well, go compound that 10% again. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, if you just compound those 10% over those 10 years, then the return jumps from 125% to 184% return, which gives you an extra 42,000 pounds. So an extra four grand a year, just by compounding it. Buzzers. Just by doing nothing else than taking the money they're giving you and basically giving it back to them and saying, no, reinvest that. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's delayed gratification, isn't it? Most people go, right, oh, well, you're gonna pay me seven grand a year. Mm -hmm. Lovely, thanks, I'll go on holiday with that. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll take out a lease on a car, you know, buy a boat. I'll, I'll waste that money. What um, rich dad, poor dad calls do dads. Mm -hmm. You know, just waste that money. Well, actually, just use the power of compounding, and just yeah. Oh, and time. I mean, that's just a ten-year period, and you know, I've eked an extra forty grand out of that investment without having to go back to the guys and saying, "Oh, that's not good enough. I want, I want a better deal. I want this. I want X, Y, Z." Mm -hmm. All I've said is, "Well, actually, I'm going to take the money they're giving me, and rather than spending it on do dads, I'm going to spend it." I'm going to reinvest that back in the market. If I can get 10%, mm -hmm. great, that's an extra 40 grand. If I get 15%, then all of a sudden, yeah, you're talking it's probably more like 70, 75 grand extra on top of this. Excellent. Um, so how have we been using it? How have we? Because a lot of people like life, real life kind of examples, don't they? So, Well, the main way we've been doing that, I think, is in our business. So, you know, our very first business, Net Free Stuff, was basically it was a freebie website, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So that, when we sold it, was turning over about 10 grand a month. Now, we started that business, well, I started that business, um, when was that? Six years, seven years before we sold it mm -hmm. with 100 quid. Yep. So I managed to turn 100 quid into £120,000 a year. Um, revenue stream, mm -hmm. basically, by reinvesting every penny so yeah so I spent 100 quid on a domain name on a crappy looking website 
when it earns a little bit of money, I then reinvested that in a bit of better design um, or a newsletter software. Um, you know, the minute I had a few hundred quid, I went to London and met some contacts there and just literally just reinvested every penny that I earned for a good 18 months. Um, I mean, it took nine months to earn anything from that business. So I was putting in time. So I was reinvesting my own time, but also any money it made. I mean, it, it took nine months to earn its first check. I wish I'd framed it now. I'd cashed it at the time because obviously I wanted to reinvest it, but I, now I wish I'd framed it because it was for 13 pounds and 51 pence. And I still remember that to this day. It was like April 2001 and I had this check and I was like, I've just earned real money yeah. from an idea. I'm like, brilliant. Cash it, quick. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah. you know, I'd gone from there. So April 2001, the business earned £13.51. Nine months later, I gave up my job mm -hmm. to do that full time um, because literally it accelerated. So I earned 13 quid while I reinvested that. I can't remember what I bought now, but all of a sudden I was able to reinvest in newsletter software and, and getting better contacts and better design. And before you know it, you know, I'd done a few deals and oh, I'm earning £2,000 a month now. Where the hell did that come from? Well, now I'm earning £2,000 a month. Let's do some advertising. Now, you know, all of a sudden I, mean, I did some that didn't work well. I did you know, radio advertising and advertising in the newspaper and um, banner ads everywhere. But then all of a sudden, Google AdWords launched and we were able to just reinvest everything into that, which was a phenomenal return on investment, mm -hmm. never mind 10%. You know, we were basically, it was a money machine. We were chucking probably probably 100 quid a day at it and getting a thousand pound a day out. So what's that? 900% return mm -hmm. on investment. But not only that, but that was turning around so quickly because most people are used to talking in terms of 10% a year. Mm -hmm. Well, so we were getting that 900% and we were getting that money back two months later. So we were then able to reinvest that money and get the return on that two or three months later. So we were recycling this cash three times a year, four times a year at over 100% every time. So we were doubling our money every time mm -hmm. and just able to do that several times a year. And I think that's where most people can do it is look, if you've got a business that's making a little bit of money, even if it's a side business and you've got a day job at the moment, just reinvest what you've got. If you can avoid cashing out, if you can avoid taking a, a wage from it, do that. I mean, every, I mean, look, I, I, we've gone through all of our businesses that we've that we've done, and almost everyone we've done that, where we've had real success, is because we've reinvested it. So live football, I put here. We bought this website six and a half grand. It was earning six hundred quid a month. Mm -hmm. We reinvested everything we did conversion rate optimization on it we did adwords on it we completely redesigned the website we we chucked everything we had at that for about a year so that first year we did we made no money from this website so we bought it based on the fact that it's earning 600 quid a month well it didn't it earned us nothing for the first year that site then made us over half a million over the next three years because we reinvested everything um one of our main businesses now free racing tips we started that as a joint venture in 2008 the only investment we started that with was, was the website, uh, which was I bought on eBay for 500 quid. It had a little bit of traffic, going to Google. We had basically three guys putting in an hour a day. And we just reinvested our time and all the money that the website made for about 18 months. So we went from kind of, yeah, no earnings, 18 months after, even after about 18 months, that website was earning 500 quid a month, 600 quid a month. I mean, that now turns over 700 grand a year and employs six full-time people, God knows how many other outsourced third parties. Yeah. That was that's, that was a 500 pound investment nine years ago. So we've compounded that from it's 500 huge growth, isn't it? It is from 500 yeah, yeah. quid. We've turned 500 quid into 700 grand a year. I and mean, that's not all profit, mm -hmm. but we've created this behemoth and it employs six people now. That, provide six people with a living off a single 500 pound investment mm -hmm. yeah you know, say nine years ago so how did we do that well all we did was yeah compound the design better design increased advertising spend doing seo work doing conversion rate optimization increase the ad spend some more get even better design do some pr 
increase the ad spend even further, get some staff in, increase the ad spend even further, <laughs> increase the ad spend and increase the ad spend and spend even more on advertising because you can just ramp it up and absolutely scale it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what we're working on at the moment, form ratings. We bought that in 2013, so three and a half years ago now, for three grand. Mm -hmm. Based on, it was only 300 quid a month. You know, we bought it for about 10, 10, 12 months earnings. And we've so far, over three and a half years, we've compounded that site to the level it's earning about two grand a month now. Um, but we're now working on taking that to the next level and compounding that up. So we're now saying, well, let, let's take the two grand a month that's earning and let's reinvest that. So let's compound that growth. Let's get much better design on there. Let's allocate some of our staff resources and our time to putting the, the systems, the processes in place to grow that member base, improve the customer experience, and then once we've done that, we increase the marketing spend. So, you know, so compounding them not is it's not only just an injection of cash because that's not what some people can do, but it's investing time and it's investing a bit of effort, resources. A bit of resources, resources, learning a lot, a bit of knowledge yeah. really. So if you can learn to do it yourself, you don't have to outsource to a lot of things. Um, so, so really it doesn't necessarily involve cash per se. No, yeah, anybody could kind of pick it up and actually run with it with a bit of knowledge and a bit of doing and, and a bit of time to do it with. Absolutely. But once you've got the cash, then we invest the cash as well. Yeah, yeah. Cash, cash plus time. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, if there's a physics major here, that's probably <laughs> you know, cash plus time equals momentum or something like that. You know? I mean, we, we invest in, in many different areas now. We've got properties or commercial and residential, silver bullion, land, art, stocks, shares. You know, we use compounding in all of these, all of these areas and you do get phenomenal growth by it. But for me, business blows them all out of the water for exactly what we were talking about earlier. The, the ROI you can get because you can compound not only your money, but your money, your time, your leverage, your staff, your resources, your systems, your processes, and most importantly, your knowledge, I think. Mm -hmm. Because once you learn something, you can't unlearn it. No. All you're doing then is adding to that learning. So you know a bit, and then you learn a bit more, and you learn a bit more. Um, growth is, well, growth, all growth isn't linear for me. It is cumulative. Mm -hmm. So the more you keep on learning, the more you're going to grow, the more you're going to succeed. And the easiest way to do that is to keep listening to us. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just learned, I'm just reading, um, I know you, you chose a different book about content, uh, about writing, didn't you, for the kind of our, our monthly groups. Yes. Um, so that I kind of chose a different book because I like the first Grant Cardone well, book so much I've gone in for, um, Sell or Be Sold. Cool. And that is a lot about knowledge. It's kind of, you've got to learn the knowledge to sell. If you learn the knowledge to sell, it's not something they teach you in schools because schools don't find selling important. No. But you have you use selling everywhere you go, whatever you do, whether you're selling yourself to buy, to get a loan, or whether you're trying to get a deal out somewhere or, or whatever, you, you're kind of selling yourself or selling your service or whatever the case may be. And um, without that knowledge to sell, then you kind of can't make those sales and so therefore you kind of fail and you kind of don't do things. So um, knowledge is, is going to be a topic a bit later on, I think. In our series, because I think it's really important. And I think definitely, yeah, we'll, we'll have to get. Um... And I'll mention Cardone again. You did. I'm sure we made a promise last week that we weren't going to mention Grant Cardone this week. I thought that was last week. No, last week we promised we weren't going to mention him this week. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, never okay. mind. It's a different book, and this... I know a couple of people have looked at the book that you recommended, the uh, Be Obsessed or um, Be Average. Be Average, yeah. and and they've read it and they've thoroughly enjoyed it. So. Yeah, yeah. So, this podcast is brought to you by Sorry, just just showing that I'm actually reading it up, up in my knowledge. So, um, yeah, that's good. It is. I mean, that, you you touched on a point there, which I think is a whole podcast in itself, and that's what the school system actually teaches you, mm. um, because they do they're still completely stuck in the industrial age, whereby they're churning out people for jobs, um, not for businesses, not for entrepreneurs, not for investors. Um, not for and success. Yes. Not for the not for the, not for the calibre of people <laughs> that listen to this podcast. So we are back next week um, with another show. So the topic next week is one that everyone has been asking for, and that is looking at the work-life balance. Um, it's something that I know a lot of people struggle with, and it's something that we're going to uh, tackle next week if we've got time and you know we're not too busy with the family stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So in the meantime, don't forget to join us in the Facebook community. That's it. You're looking for Big Idea Podcast. Put that in the search bar. You'll find us. Ask to join and uh, we'll approve you and you'll be in. And you can continue the conversation. 
before, during and after our podcast. And uh, yeah, so ask any questions. Tell us what you'd like to cover for the next month. Yep, you can watch the live recordings of the podcast as we do them. They're live on Facebook now. Hello, everybody. Which is quite entertaining. I did wave at the camera there for those of you listening in audio. <laughs> and of course, the other thing is, is we're going to have a section on our site called um, for the show notes. So from what everything we talk about, any links that are things we can share with you, uh, we'll put them in there. So you're looking at bigidea.co.uk forward slash podcast. And we'll have the show notes in there. We'll also have the video so you can watch the video and the audio so you can download the audio from there as well. Cool, thank you very much, and see you later, guys. I will say that very speedily because I think I just actually paused the recording early. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll tag that in afterwards. Cool, so I think we've, I think we've actually, yeah. It's not even coming up now. What's going on there? Is it down, oh, it's down there? Yeah, it has paused. Cool. Well, there we go, thank you for that. Cheers, Jason. That's rather that's good. Right, thank you. That's all right. You, enjoyed, you got your compounding, I like your good. snowballs, that's yeah. good. Snowballs at Christmas is a good thing to go through. It is definitely. So, um, have we got any comments in the Facebook? I didn't see any coming in live. No, there's no none there, I don't think. So, again, let us know what you think, guys. Did you did you enjoy that? Did you not? I, I love it because I love compounding. But, um, you know, was that too much information for you? Was that too irrelevant? Was that too... Do we go through things too fast, too slowly? Um, yeah, let us let know. Let us know how you compound, or if you're already compounding, how that's working out for you. If you think you could do with some help with compounding, again, get in touch and ask any questions you can. So if you've got some spare cash, or you've got some spare time, or you've got a website idea, or whatever, let us know in, in the group, and um, we can have a chat with you about that. And we can let you know how best to go forward with the compounding as well. I do. Thanks so much, guys. And we will see you uh, next Monday for episode four. Um, again, oh, actually, if you've got any... Uh, questions that you want us to tackle anything specific relating to work-life balance then let us know on this thread too and we will look to tackle that on monday awesome dude cool thanks for listening over and out see you later bye bye